Today we're going over how to weave inversions into your practice and how to gain confidence moving into your inversions, especially in the middle of the room. So you won't need any props, maybe some wall space. If you've got some wall space, that would be beneficial. And let's get started right away. Lie down onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice warm embrace, rocking gently from side to side. So we're gonna do quite a bit of core work, but it is well worth it. Inversions are natural mood elevators. So many benefits to getting upside down. Hug yourself into a tight little ball. Draw your forehead towards your knees. Give yourself a tight squeeze. Inhale to extend the arms and the legs out. Drop your fingertips and toe tips. Notice this is a flat line, very much like your handstand. So you can imprint. Exhale, hug the knees in. Inhale to extend. So we're replicating some of the movements that we'll make in our inversions. Exhales drop back in. In orientations that are much more comfortable. Inhales to extend. So you can imprint the stabilizing muscle engagement. Exhale, drop back in. Once more, extend and hold. Now flatten the palms like you're actually hand standing. Squeeze the elbows together. Spiral the eyes, elbows towards each other. Plug the arms into the shoulder sockets. Now, press the small of your back into the mat. Firm navel towards spine. Squeeze the legs together. You can even work the chin lock here. Or gaze between the thumbs. Hug your knees in. That's why I like to joke. Everyone wants to be able to do handstand in the middle of the room, but not everyone wants to do the core work necessary. Trust me, it's worth it. So let the feet come to the mat. Hips distance apart. Press up, lift up, roll the spine up, sweep the arms up, flowing through your bridge pose. Exhale, slowly lower. So I do a lot of flowing bridge, especially as my warm up, to kind of break up any stagnant energy around the vertebral column so that you can articulate the spine. When you're actually pressing instead of plunging into your handstand, and there's a difference, you are stacking each and every vertebra individually. So it's almost like this tendril unfurling. So this core work that uh, elicits this unfurling articulation of the spine is really, really useful for anyone aspiring to press into handstand. And nothing wrong with plunging into handstand, but this will help you to find a little bit more energy conductivity as well. Those of you that are obsessed with Kundalini activation like me, all right, press it up, lift it up. Hands come behind the back, interlace your fingers, draw the shoulder blades together, and press your chest towards your chin. Now here's the chin lock, John Darabanda, much easier to engage in headstand, but you can actually engage it in forearm balance and in handstand, and it will help you to find a nice open breath across the chest and better alignment in the bone structure, although it is way trickier to balance. Gently releasing the interlace, extend the arms straight up, protracting shoulder blades, lift heels up, and slowly lower. Again, articulate. Spinal articulation. Which look for the knees from side to side to release the lower back. So again, replicating the sensation of a press on our backs, which is probably, I think, the easiest orientation to work these movements in. So that's why we're starting here. Legs can extend straight up. Wrap the elbows in. We usually close the practice with this, but since we're working on inversions, we're going to take it up into shoulder stand. Keep the gaze directly up and protect your cervical spine by pressing the back of the head into the mat, already starting to engage the muscles surrounding cervical spine. Pressing down through the upper arms, press it up, lift it up, shoulder stand. So get a nice, solid shoulder stand. And then lower the feet down into your Velocina plow. Now if you can, instead of reaching the hands back behind to interlace as we normally do in Velocina, I want you to extend the arms towards the feet. So it's like you're in a portable. Now, slowly lower, again, articulating the spine. Find the core engagement that allows for that spinal articulation and then reach the legs forward. So it's like a pike press. And then back again. 
Roll back up into your Kawasana. Slowly lower. Love these floor exercises. Again, you can steadily build your central core for infrastructure. So when we do take it into the orientation with respect to gravity, that is actually the handstand that, of course, we have the central core to hoist ourselves up. All right, one more. Work it really, really slow. Find that spinal articulation. I love this core work. And again, we usually shy away from teaching shoulder stand early on because it does activate the parasympathetic nervous system, but with all the work we'll be doing, you'll definitely get heated and, and active and alert again with the sympathetic nervous system. Now from here, feet come down to the mat. Feet about hips distance apart. If you need to, slide your feet forward to make this work. Reach the arms forward. Peel the chest up. And again, you can slide the feet as far forward as you need to roll the spine all the way up. All right, more spinal articulation core. Slowly lower it down. Set the arms up overhead. Exhale to reach it forward. Beautiful. Inhale to slowly lower. Extend the arms up and overhead. Exhale, reach it forward. Again, this is divine core because you're learning how to maneuver your skeletal structure in space. Inhale, to slowly lower. You'll still get the six pack abs, which is the beauty of it. Exhale, reach the arms forward. Maybe, maybe plus some. I didn't realize it, but I actually have more than six. I have like eight now. Inhale, to slowly lower. And it's not because I'm going for the body image aesthetic value. Inhale, lift up. All right. But it's more so because I am obsessed with being able to conduct energy through my midsection to be able to maneuver into these transitions, these shapes. Hands come forward and in front of your hips. Straighten the arms, rounding the upper spine. Throw your knees high, bend toward your chest. Maybe one foot lowers top, followed by the other. So I want to give everybody the baby steps so that you guys know where you can work. Right? And you can simplify so that it works for you. Maybe both feet come down the top. And it's okay, honestly, if you're crunching, you have a little bulge, perfectly normal, right? When you're standing upright and you're flexing, then yeah, your abs are gonna show, but I think sometimes people shy away from doing some of this work because they're like, oh, I look like I'm protruding. <laughs> Get over it, maybe straighten through the legs, inhales to lower. Inhales to lower and exhales to lift. This stuff is core work. It's usually pretty easy at first, but then as you continue, it's like, ooh, hello, fire. <laughs> and now really makes the feet back down. Which is why I like to kind of switch around, like fallow fields that utilize a different field each season so that the nutrients are able to replenish, we're able to restore our energy levels. And onto another muscle group. Hands come back behind you. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. You can let the head hang back. Exhale. Hips come back behind the wrists. Lift one or both feet up. It's okay if the feet don't float up today. Please. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. Exhale, hips come back behind the wrists. Lift one or both feet up. Press up, lift up, reverse tabletop. And exhale. Release those hips back down to the ground. Whew. Soles of feet come together. Knees out wide, hands on your feet. Inhale as you find length, puff the chest. And exhale for a full body kanasana. You can press your elbows into your inner thighs to self-adjust. Another thing, and this really was what got me obsessed with this stuff. <laughs> it's getting all the likes on Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> is when you're able to press into your inversions, there is a solid energetic connection between the lower most chakras and the uppermost chakras. And the uppermost chakras are where our sakakunas, our cerebral spinal centers that have to do with processing are located. Hold the spine back up through the seated. Namely, throat chakra and brow chakra. Legs come out wide. And I was obsessed. I was like, you know what? I, 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 I'm not gonna lie, I've done psychedelics. They're really fun but I want my own supply. <laughs> so maybe that can be a motivating factor for you too. Don't worry, it comes on slowly. So if you've ever had a bad acid trip, 
It's not like that. Don't worry. Hands praying your right thigh. I can't believe I just said that. I'm still going to post this. Straight through your arms, round your upper spine. Now plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket and plug the right foot up. Pulse. Here for five, four, three, two, one, and set back down. It is useful to be able to maneuver your legs in space. You don't want jerky leg syndrome. Now lean weight forward over your right thigh. Press down through your palms. Float the hips up if you float the feet up. It's okay if the feet don't float up. Just try. Just do your very best. Gently set back down. So same thing. Other side. Hands free. Your left thigh. Straighten through the arms. and round in your upper spine. Plug the left femur head bone into the left hip socket and float the left foot off of the mat. Just an inch. And pulse. Here for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. I know, the hip flexors are probably talking to you. We're gonna come back and stretch those guys out. Now lean weight forward, press it up, lift it up, maybe float the feet up. And gently set back down. Whew, you guessed it. Hands, air, thighs. We're gonna do both at the same time. If you still got a little bit of juice left, feel free to skip. I know because I've been there before. The thighs might feel like cinder blocks right about now. Again, it's all part of the process that will get lighter as you continue to practice these exercises. Straighten through the arms, rounding the upper spine. Plug both your hip bones in and float the feet up. So this is our mulabana right here for five. Interconnectivity, four. We want to be one cohesive unit. Three, two, and one. Set back down, walk the hands forward. Upa Vishta. I had a really hard time because, again, I went in, I wanted the third activation all the time. I really wanted to get to know my karma. So it's like, supposedly there's these stagnant points of energy that are causing kundalini energy to deviate, which is causing unnecessary suffering in my life. I want to get to know them. I want to get to know my stagnant energy and I want to purge it and I want to clear it. So I was obsessed and people, of course, were like, aw, you're just obsessed with physical, whatever. People are going to give you crap and just don't listen to them keep going keep practicing don't don't listen to the naysayers because it is hard work and more often than not they're projecting their unwillingness to do that work rolling the spine back up through the seated hands from underneath your thighs now draw the legs together cross the shins while over the legs come forward into your tabletop pose ground down through your palms and ground down through your shins inhale as you melt the heart forward and up sit bones reach up gaze up and exhale to round. I'm just letting you know because I, I uh, received a lot of flack, a lot of resistance, and a lot of um, just limiting thought forms from people. But they, were, they were, of course, were projecting their own limiting thought forms, and I want you to be able to detract these limiting thought forms if they come at you. So one of them was you're just obsessed with one part of the practice, that being handstand. So. What about the rest of the practice? You don't care about the rest of the practice? That is completely false. Take it into your varicose hip circles, shoulder circles. You really do have to focus on the whole rest of the practice in order to attain the handstand. Handstand is the pinnacle of the practice, right? If you don't have open hips, you can't utilize your, utilize your bone structure to ascend into that space. If you don't have an open heart space, you can't plug the arms in and create that straight line which is more efficient energetically. So that is a complete falsehood. Don't listen to that one. All right, from here, wrist ups. We're gonna go through the gamut, all the things, wrists, to prepare our wrists for weight bearing. Again, this is another one where it starts out, oh, this is so easy. And then it's, you start to build up the lactic acid, push through, we want our wrists to be strong. All right, now fingertips point towards midline, palms facing up, bend in the elbows, ball the hands up in the fists, straighten through the arms and breathe into your wrists. Quite the contrary, I actually learned how to love parts of the practice that I absolutely despised when I first started thanks to handstand. Namely the hips, I used to despise hip openers. Horrible, horrible muscle tension in my hips when I first started. Gently release. Fingertips point towards your knees and lean your weight back. This stuff too, right? Like hand and foot yoga, this stuff, a lot of people don't like this type of yoga or this part of the practice. 
it is far removed from the central nervous system, so sometimes it can be even more sensitive than hip openers, shoulder openers. So they peel the heels of the pants off of the mat. But as someone seeking to weave inversions into their practice, you realize that this stuff is quintessential, indispensable. And you want to have open hands, strong wrists, in order to be able to do the weight bearing that you want to do. Tuck the toes, tuck you on top of the heels. And then we'll tuck those pinky toes. I know. And <laughs> that being said, oh man, not a lot of people like feet. They really don't. And especially Pisces, which Pisces, this is your body part is the feet, which I get it uh, sometimes when the sign has a certain part of the body that it's associated with. Sometimes that becomes a problematic part of your body. The same is true of the fishies too. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've taught Madrasa in a class. Someone's come up to me after class like, oh my god, was that posture supposed to be that intense? And I always ask, are you a Pisces? And like 100%, they're always like, oh, how did you know? Because <laughs> you guys store all of your emotional energy in your feet. All right, palms come forward. One palm faces up, one palm faces down, ball the hands up in the fist and then explode like you're flicking water off your fingertips. Now again, you learn to love this stuff because it is absolutely essential. You want to be able to feel with your feet in space and switch. Opposite palm faces up, opposite palm faces down. And aspiring to work into inversions too is inherently an aspiration and endeavor to conduct energy more streamlined, more efficiently through your central axis, which will again improve your ability to flush out and cleanse your whole chakra system. Both palms facing out, reach the arms out wide. And it will improve upon your ability to process karmic debris as you're practicing, which is why I like to absolutely saturate all of my sequences with inversions, right? Turn on the third eye so I can see with what I'm extrapolating as I'm holding space. Now extend the arms straight up. Case in point, this isn't just me. Look to the Ashtanga practice. Literally, pretty much a handstand in between each and every seated posture. Now keep going. Already, I'm starting to feel those hands. Keep going, just like a Kundalini exercise. Push through it. Lean your weight back. Lift your knees up. Oh yes, the toe stand. Find the balance. Gaze a single point of focus. Now lift. Woo! Beautiful work. Find that central axis, and then slowly lower it back down again. Amazing. Knees come back down to the earth, palms come forward facing out, cross the arms, interlace the fingers, knuckles come forward your chest, and reach the arms through. Nod the shoulders from side to side. This should feel amazing after all the heat that you generated just from doing flashlights for that long. Knuckles back towards the chest, release, opposite hand on top, interlace. Knuckles come towards your chest, reach your arms through and then nod the shoulders from side to side. We do store a lot of gnarly karmas in the upper half, I should warn you. Knuckles back towards your chest, release and shake it out. And it is very much a heart chakra clearance for the back. Just handstands, right? Involve our hands, our arms, which connect directly to our heart space, the thoracic spine, walk the hands forward. So we are clearing on behalf of all humanity as we do this work. A little drum roll. Keep it up. Which way for the heels? And there's certain karmas that we've all kind of uh, intaken, ascribed ourselves through um, the societal contract by agreeing to certain terms for survival. And I like to joke, as soon as we decided to become homo erectus, we started to accumulate karmas and this half, literally a whole half of our sphere. Walk your hands back, lift your knees up, stretching out the bridges of the feet. So sometimes I can tell when I teach inversions, that's why I, mean, I, I love having a whole class that's devoted to it. It's like, we're, we're doing inversions, like this is what we're doing. Um, sometimes if I, if I throw in inversions and I, I can tell, this is more so in a 3D studio setting, that someone is not ready to address those karmas and, and confront those shadow aspects of self, they might actually have a, uh, a reaction to it. And I've gotten better about being able to intercept it or 
um, become aware that maybe someone's not ready to confront themselves on that level. That's up on top of the ten knuckles. But really, props to you for, for hitting play and practicing with me today, because this is some deep, dark, nitty gritty stuff. Um, I, I like to joke too, it was necessary for us to be able to intellectualize metaphysics, right? We needed to get that spine up, walk my hands forward, lower it down onto your forearms. Now tuck your toes, hips lift up and back, dolphin pose. Spiral the biceps forward, hollow out the armpits, push the floor away, we extend the sit bones up towards the ceiling. We get a little bit more spinal articulation here. Roll the spine forward into your forearm plank. As you inhale, exhale, press up and back to the Inhale, circle forward. Exhale, press up and back. Once more. Inhale, roll forward. Pause and right forearm to 45. Rotate on the outer to the right foot. Left arm sweeps up, forearm side plank. I love holding the humerus head bone in different orientations in the shoulder socket because it will build your shoulder cuff so that all the musculature around your shoulder joint get strong. And maybe left foot steps back behind, press up your both feet with the hips up, forearm wild thing. That being said, as you build strength around the shoulder joint, also keep the space. Don't want to plug off any nadis, especially in the heart space. Switching sides, left arm to 45, returns the average left, the right arm sweeps up, forearm side plank. So that would block us off from actually being able to connect to the stock with Lunas, right? Too much masculine, not enough feminine to counterbalance. Right foot can step back behind, press up through both feet with the hips up, forearm wall. It is a tentative balance that every yogi has to kind of keep a watchful eye on back through your forearm, plank, and hips lower sphinx. What's nice though, when third eye starts to activate, is the visions that you get will start to get muffled when you have one in balancing the other, or uh, one in excess and one in diminishment. Take some head nods. Drop right your towards right shoulder, left one with your chest, left your left shoulder. But until that third eye activation starts to come on board, really, it's, it's up to the yogi, the practitioner, to pay close attention to that. And you'll know, right, when you're, when you're too flexible, it feels like you're lacking in integrity and like things can potentially collapse in on themselves, vice versa. If you have too much strength, it feels like there's a lot of rigidity and limited range of motion. So you gotta find that balance. Back through the center. All right, here we go. Extending arms forward. I actually learned this from a contortionist and I am so grateful for it because I have been able to build so much strength in my lower spine to protect my lumbar in my backbending practice, but also useful for our inversion practice. Right arm, left leg lift, just a couple inches off of the floor here. Not going for height, going for shooting energy out through the fingertips and out through the toe tips. And then switch. So you want to feel yourself as though you were a channel of energy continuously moving energy infinitely in either direction and switch right arm left leg lift feel those back core muscles kick into here switch left arm right leg lift and switch beautiful and switch all right and you guessed it we have again the flat surface that is a perfect imprint of what a straight line is and we can feel it in our bodies it's not the orientation for handstand, but it will help us to prepare for that eventual orientation. I want you to spiral the eyes and toward each other, then internally rotate just the forearms, flatten the palms, and then gaze just underneath the eyebrows at your thumbs, the space between your thumbs. And now again, not necessarily going for lift. Right now, tuck your tailbone, firm navel towards the spine, so you can feel the soft part of your belly lift off of the floor ever so slightly, and then float just the arms and the legs. Again, imprint. You can work the chin lock if you want. Practicing with Jala Garbanda. And again, feel yourself as an open conduit of energy channeling infinitely in either direction. And you start to feel like a comic book hero or something. Beautiful work. And then release. 
So, so often I like to, I like to joke, it's our own personal fear of diving into the void or the abyss of nothingness. Right? People are, I think more so it's usually people are afraid that they'll flip over into a back bend. A very real fear. Cactus the arms, lift up the chest, press down at the fingertips, lift your chest up, drop right shoulder gaze over your left. Inhale through center and exhale to twist. Nonetheless, what ends up happening from that fear is people are unwilling to bring their hips directly to stack over the shoulders. So that's what we're going to do. A little bit of wall work today. I've been staying away from the wall as much as possible and away from props because you know not everybody has wall space, not everybody has props in their home practice. But really the wall is again like that flat line of energy that will help us to imprint. If you have a friend, you can ask them if your hips are directly over your shoulders because that's crucial. Back to the center as you inhale. And exhale, slowly release it back down. It's really tricky when all the energy flows through the bone structure when it is perfectly aligned. It relates the fingers and the massage are taken with your knuckles. It almost kind of feels like you're free falling, but you're not. Again, that's the path of least resistance. That is the most efficient path of energy, which is again why it's important to have an open shoulder girdle. Reach the hands back behind. As well as strong. Spiral the inner thighs towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin and reach the the crown. Keep this engagement, really stay into place, hands slightly underneath shoulders. Press up, lift up, cobra pose, wrap elbows and your shoulders back. And you can also, most of us have cell phones, use the video recording device on your cell phone to make sure that you're aligned. And then gently release it back down. As a Leo, I was really resistant to doing that because I know that my sign has that uh, reputation. <laughs> It's like, no, I'm not going to give in to the reputable characteristic traits of my Leo son. Um, and eventually I succumbed. I was like, but it's useful for metaphysical embodiment of these universal laws. So from your space, tuck the toes, press down through the big toes, rise the hips up and back into your dolphin pose. Now from dolphin, I want you to try lifting the elbows up both at the same time and lowering a couple times. So lift and lower. Lift and lower. Lift and then walk it back. Walk back halfway and then take a couple down dog push ups. So bending in the elbows and straighten. Bend. Straighten. Now push the floor away, slide the hands back, arrive in a forward fold at the back of the mat, grab offset elbow, shake the head, yes. Shake the head, no. All right, and then release the arms and slow roll the spine up one vertebra at a time. Core stays engaged to protect your lower back. Roll the shoulders back a couple times. Okay, so I'm gonna make this short just in case you don't have a wall space. Really quickly, one lace distance away from the wall. Measure it out. And of course, you can, if you want to, leave a little marker, like a block or a book, where your hands will be is that legs distance away. And the hands are just shoulder distance apart. So you want your hands to be directly underneath the center of your shoulder joint. Some of you dudes have really big uh, deltoids, shoulder muscles. And so I think what you do is you bring kind of like the, the knuckle joint of your thumb where the end of your deltoid is. So you bring the hands out super wide. Not saying that's wrong, but it's not as energetically efficient. So you're going to have a little bit more challenge right from the get-go, and you want to eliminate those challenges so that you can experience success right off the bat instead of a uh, struggle. <laughs> so just shoulder distance apart. Not here, here. Also, main thing, middle fingers are in line and thumbs are in line. Again, eventually you can start to work things like this, like this, like this. Um, but start with the most efficient passageways first so you can build your central core, find the efficiency, and then you can start to branch out and try some of these variations. So hands are just shoulder distance apart. Now spiral the eyes and the elbows towards each other. Plug the arms into the shoulder sockets. Push the floor away. So we have this kind of rectangular unit and it's super solid. Now walk the feet up the wall. Coming into your L shape, 
Again, continuously spiraling the eyes, the elbows toward each other. Push the floor away. Plug the arms in to receive that energy into the torso. Draw the floating ribs together. It's okay if you're an obtuse angle before your right angle. Maybe one leg extends up. Extra credit, maybe draw the knee in and extend. In and extend. Maybe leg stays straight. Lower, toe tap and lift. Lower, toe tap and lift. Switch, get both sides. Lower and lift. Lower and lift. Maybe keep the leg straight. Lower, toe tap the wrist. Back up again. Lower, toe tap the wrist. Back up again. Now both feet back to the wall. Walk the feet down. And take a little forward fold. You can actually set the hips down to the wall. And rest in a little forward fold. Maybe grab offset elbows. Let the spine hang long. Now I'm constantly nurturing my wrists so that I can continue to do my work that I want to do without having my wrist cause uh, a stiflement in my growth, my progress. So you can turn the key, rev up the motorcycle, and then switch. Now this one's a little bit more challenging. Feel free to watch first. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, feel free to skip it, but it is very, very useful. Just as I was mentioning before, the wall is a straight line. So what we're gonna do is take the L shape and walk it all the way into the wall. And you want just your toes and your nose touching the wall. All right, here we go. Know that you can cartwheel out. So maybe give yourself some space to cartwheel out if need be. And don't need to come all the way into the wall right off the bat. Heels of the hands are actually a few inches off of the wall. You're not bringing the heels of the hands all the way up to the floorboard. Toes and nose. And hold. And again, here you are working all of the muscles to hold the handstand. Try to get light so you can feel yourself balancing the straight line in space. A lot of gymnast classes will start with a two minute hold like this just to warm up the whole central core, which will give integrity to the rest of their practice, whatever movements they plan on doing. And now walk it out just a little ways. And slide the feet down, coming into a tuck. Now slide the feet back up. Slide the feet down. And slide the feet back up. A few more times. And then you can walk it back out again or cartwheel up. Walk the feet down, another forward fold, and let the hips come to the wall, grab opposite elbows, and release. And then rolling the spine back up there to seated. One thing I've noticed that a lot of hand balances were due, especially before they go up onto their canes, is a little puppy dog. Again, the puppy dog works the back bend, so it will, they're working the reverse of the plunge so that you can find the straight line in your handstand. So that being said, we have ample heat in the upper half. Give yourself about two feet distance away from the wall. From the cane, so we're just gonna do a puppy dog against the wall. Walk the hands up the wall, and then melt the heart towards the wall. Breathe into your thoracic spine. Almost kind of feels like you're weeding out these points of energetic deficiency seven energy and gently roll it up and off of the wall Whew. yeah maybe use some some socks you're worried about putting spots on your wall <laughs> all right maybe you've got a downward facing dog pose and notice how solid your down dog feels too after all of that because down dog is essentially your handstand in another orientation with respect to your gravity from downward facing. Right leg extends up and back as you inhale. Exhaling, knee to nose, round upper spine. Gently set the right foot between the palms. Left foot swings down to a 45. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Both arms sweep up. Gaze up, lift your heart up. Again, 
hands come behind the back, interlace the fingers, draw across the collarbones as you inhale. Exhale the hands from the hips, lead with the heart as right shoulder passes right knee, then begin to round. You can also set the torso on top of the right thigh. <clears throat> Deep breaths into your lower spine. Grounding down to lift up. Roll the spine up, both arms, sweep up, warrior one. Hands to hips as you straighten through that right leg, scoot left foot forward and shorten the stance. Inhale as you find length through the spine, exhale to hinge from the hips. Lead with the heart, hands come to the mat. So again, when you become obsessed with inverting, you become obsessed with all things core. So not just your midsection, your abdomen. We don't really care so much about the six pack abs, you'll still manifest them, but more so being able to conduct energy, streamline our energy efficiently through our central axis. And a part of that is Mulabanda. So plugging the right femur head going into the right hip socket, lift it onto the fingertips, see if you can float the right foot off of the mat. And then gently set the right foot back down. Walk the hands to the right, lengthen the spine and handle pelvic bowl, breathe into your lower back. Left hand plants, outer edge of the right foot, the right hand to your sacrum, and roll the right shoulder back. So we've just imprinted the mula banda, firming at the pelvic floor, descending the femur bone. Now, as you twist and parvrit the trigonasana, twist to triangle pose, imprinting uliana banda, right arm can extend up. As you inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, consciously engage your central core and twist deeper. Beautiful, both hands back down to the mat. And then scoot that left foot back a little bit, left heel lifts, inhale rise, high crescent pose. So we are preparing for a handstand vinyasa. Now take your left hand and actually capture your right bicep. Roll the right arm in towards midline. Now just internally rotate the forearm. Plug the arm into the shoulder socket. Switch, both arms extend up. Now right hand can clasp the left upper arm, roll it in, plug it in. Both arms extend up, gaze between the thumbs, relax the shoulders, draw the floating arms together. Now shift weight forward into the right foot, press up with the wear three. More engagement, more stabilizer muscles engaging that replicate the handstand. I want you to try to hit a warrior three stance before you go up all the way. Hands to mat, standing splits. Drop forward towards chin, make the left heel. Breathe into the right hamstrings. Now hands plant, middle fingers line, thumbs line. You can scoot that right foot back a little ways. Push the floor away, arms stay straight. Kick towards yourself, maybe catch that warrior three. And if you caught the warrior three, maybe connect the legs together at the top. Squeeze the legs together, reach out the wall of the feet. And then let's work a little spirit drop. So you can bring one leg down, bend the elbows like in Chaturanga. It's a little bit one, two, drop. Inhale to Urdha Mukha, and exhale, Adha Mukha Shvanasana. One thing I see people do is sometimes they do the spirit drop before they're ready to plunge down, and the impact on both of the feet at the same time is so intense. It'll, it'll be a really loud sound, and then uh, more often than not, they'll, they'll kind of shyly tell me after class, hey, I think I stubbed my toe. <laughs> so, a little word to the wise work the one two drop through your spirit drop initially until you build up your, your planching muscles, and then you can work a slow, controlled descent down, which is so pretty with both legs at the same time. Left leg extends up and back as you inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, round that upper spine. Gently step the left foot between the palms. Right foot swings down, 45. Inhale, rise. Warrior one, both arms sweep up. Turn the right hip forward as you drag that left hip back. Gaze up, lift your heart up. Hands come behind the back, into these fingers. Broaden across the color with two. Inhale, exhale, hinge from the hips, knee with heart. Humble as left shoulder passes left knee, then begin to round, lengthen the whole spine. Up and out of the pelvic bowl, breathe into your lower back. Grounding down to lift up. 
Both arms sweep up, warrior one. Hands to hips. As you straighten through your left leg and scoot the right leg forward, short and stance. Inhale as you find length, exhale, hinge from the hips, loop apart. Hands come down to the mat. So hopefully uh, you engage this descending of the femur bone as you rise up into your inversion. And it will help you to bring the hips up and over the shoulders. So again, fear not diving into the abyss. And if you need to overcome that fear, find that little bond engagement. Pull that femur hip bone in and usually that's a little tiny bit of, of force needed to align and connect to your central power line. Lifting up onto the fingertips. Plug the left femur hip bone into the left hip socket, pull the left off the mat just an inch. I've also heard of some people kicking up in a handstand without engaging this and the impact of the femur bone into the hip socket without engaging Mula Banda can have detrimental effects. Really want to find this engagement. Set the left foot back down. All right, because it's like, boom, right? It's hitting into that hip socket. You want to be already connected before you go up into the inversion. So it's already energy continuity and no impact. Walk the hands to the left. Very passionate about this subject, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> right hand plants. Outer edge of the left foot. Left hand to the sacrum. Stabilize your pelvic bowl. Roll the left shoulder back. And just as I thought, I have been able to activate third eye on a regular basis during my practice. I still meditate afterwards to do a deep cleanse and really understand all the karmic debris that I'm able to uh, flesh out, to scrape away. Left arm can extend up, gaze up. But it is so useful because then you know exactly where in your field that stagnant energy was stored. Maybe meditating after the practice is still useful, but you may not know exactly where the limiting thought forms were stored up in your auric field. Both hands back down to the mat. Knee weight into your left foot. Now step that right foot back a little ways. Right heel lifts. Inhale as you rise. High crescent pose. And just a little bit more imprinting. Now this time, let's have the right hand capture the upper left arm, and then actually manually, externally rotate the humerus head bone in the shoulder socket. Plug it in, and then internally rotate the forearm. That is lost on so many yogis. Then the left, right arm extends, left hand catches the upper arm with the right arm again, manually. I'm really overemphasizing here. Externally rotate humerus head bone and shoulder socket. Then just internally rotate the forearm. Both sides. You can see too how this will energize the upper half of your body, even in a standing upright posture. Start to pitch the heart forward. Press up, lift up. Warrior three. And then I want you to try for warrior three before you connect the legs at the top. Hands come down to mat. Standing splits. Left hand behind the left ankle. Draw forehead towards shin. Now both hands to mat, middle fingers in line, thumbs in line, scoot that left foot back, lean weight into your knee foundation, push the floor away. Pause in your warrior three. Then maybe that right leg stays anchored in. It's like it's being pulled up by a string. Keep that continuity of energy and then connect legs together at the top. Squeeze the legs together at the top. Reach out for the balls of the feet. Draw those floating ribs together and in. Magnetize sternum and pubic bone towards one another. Now left leg can slowly lower down again to that warrior three. Bend in the elbows, wrap the elbows in like in Chaturanga. One, two, tap. Inhale into your Urdhva Mudra. And exhale. Roll over the toes. Hips rise up and back. Adho Mukha Shemasana. Well done. Walk the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Walk the hands back, coming into Malasana. Squat at the back of the mat. Now take your forearms. Place your forearms on top of your calves. Take a seat. So I like how Shiva is always on fire. And I, I like to joke that everybody always, well, it's not happening this year at Burning Man, but usually <laughs> they keep a tally of how many days until the man burns. 
as they burn, they burn the big wooden man at the end of the burn. And I like to joke, I burn every single day. <laughs> One of the principles of Burning Man is radical self-reliance. So you do become very familiar with how to massage your own forearms and your wrists so that you can keep growing and thriving in your inversion practice. So you can go nod it from side to side. Okay, so a couple baby steps here. I want you to just kind of play with this. And that's the thing is like you want to be like childlike as you learn how to move through these transitions. And you want to give yourself the opportunity to look silly and for things to feel awkward. It's okay. Release. So we're going to do a little bit of like a, a hopscotch. Right, very, very tough, like, um, but it's it's very useful. It's kind of animalistic. We are emerging out of our beastial nature as we immerse in alchemy, but it, it, that's not to say that we're not utilizing some of these movements of the animals in the animal kingdom to be able to override our bestial nature. So we're not actually repressing them, we're utilizing them. So <laughs> that being said, it's kind of like it's kind of like a frog, right? You want to just hop forward and then hop forward. And then hop back. And hop back. Fun stuff, right? Okay. Now, walk it forward, press it up, lift up into your downward facing. Try putting the brakes on as you hop to the front of the mat and lower as slow as you can into a velocity at the front of the mat. Just like so. Now hop it back. Maybe bring those hips up to stack. Maybe make it clap. Again, childlike, lighthearted sense of humor. And then slowly lower, maybe toe tap. All right, big toes keep touching heels slowly apart. Inhale as you feel the chest forward, finally like arch. And exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bend the knees. Both arms sweep and shift weight into the big toe mounts. Heels lift, slowly lower down. Knees open and wide, reach your arms straight through. Gently take a seat, put your feet, knees can stay bent, or straighten through the legs. Inhales to lower, exhales to lift, inhales to lower, exhales to lift once more, lower, hold, flutter, here for five, four, three, Two and one. Well, again, take some rocks. Feet will come wide, reach your arms through. Malasana we'll squat at the front of the mat. So, again, you fall in love with all parts of the practice. We're going to navigate into an arm balance now, but cross no growth pose, which will help you to firm and tone the arm muscles. And of course, it will help you to find your Jalandar Banda as we navigate into headstand and your straight line. Now, if you're having difficulty with finding your straight line, or your freestanding handstand in the middle of the room. Uh, headstand is a good place to start working in the middle of the room and gaining confidence. Then maybe we'll, we'll add some more core work into it, because why not? <laughs> All right, knees can lie up and twist the armpits. Lean weight forward, lift one or both feet. Now deep bend in the elbows and straight through the arms. Lower, who needs a gym, right? And lift. Lower, and then this time tuck the chin, crown to ground, press it up, lift it up, headstand. Now, let's try hips back, feet forward, hang the toe tap, and rise back up. A couple more times, lower, maybe toe tap, rise it back up. Knees come high up and in towards the armpits, press it up, lift it up. Bakasana Kro Pose. Gaze forward, shift weight onto the right shin, left leg extends back at Kwadabak. Left foot steps way back. Right foot steps between the palms, left foot swings down 45, windmill up, leaving with your left arm, warrior two. Relax the shoulders, extend up the fingertips. Flip the right palm, reverse your warrior. Left hand to the right half, lengthen through the right side body, breathe into the right side body. Inhale as you rise. Right elbow, right thigh, left arm extends forward. Left hand can reach back for the right thigh half part. 
Right hand instep of the right foot, there is a full bind. Full binders, feel free to take flight. Burn up parallax. Left foot steps forward. Press up, lift up, into rise. Can you keep that right leg straight as you rise? Gaze in a single point of focus. Your joystick, straighten through standing, then straighten through lifted. Send in breath, send in your jetting. And then slowly lower birds. Take your time. Pressing down for the right foot. Shift foot forward into count. Left leg extends back down. Half moon pose on the way back. And step it way back. Release the bind. Rise where you're too straight for that right leg as you rise. Heel to left foot forward, short in the stance. Deepen in the right hip crease. Extend right arm forward, reach. Right hand to ankle, shin forward. Left arm extends up and twist. From the navel as you twist, gaze is at the left fingertips. All right, here we go. So we are prepping a uh, ascent into our inversions from our external rotation of your head, bone, and hip socket. Gently bend the right knee, knee weight forward. Press up, lift up, half your pose. Maybe bend left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot because it's important to counterbalance all this hard work that we're doing with a little bit of back bending, heart opening. And then gently release. Kick the left leg back and out to the left. To the left, to the left. And then work a slow, controlled descent down to meet the right. Optional. And you can give this a try if you want to. You can even put your right foot on blocks or even on a chair, a couch. Do what you need to do to be able to connect to these deep core muscles. Same thing, but with a bent knee, puppy press it up. And then legs come together at the top. Squeeze legs together, reach out the walls of the feet. Now, work the slow control descent down. Feet out wide, butt back, feet forward. So tap. Inhale, peel shift forward, find leg arch. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bend the knees. Both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toes, lift your heels up. Slowly lower down. Knees up and wide, get your arms straight through. Gently take a seat and float your feet. So again, it's, it's fun core work. And you start to love the core because you know it's going to be able to conduct energy through the midsection with more ease, and you won't have those jerky legs, which are so difficult to balance. Maybe steering through the legs here. Knees can be bent. Inhale, slowly lower. Exhale, slow lift. Inhale, slow lower. Exhale, slow lift. Once more, lower, hold, flutter. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Hug your knees and start to take some rocks forward and back. Feet will come wide and reach your arms through. All right, so now make your way back into Bakasana. Maybe some Bakasana push ups. Maybe slow lower into tripod headstand. Maybe some leg lifts. All right, there's kind of this whole spectrum, this karma buffet. Pick and choose whatever serves you best. Maybe you're just exploring Bakasana today. That's a start. Be where you are. Enjoy the process. Knees to come high up and towards the armpits. Knee weight forward, lift one or both feet. Now, bend deeply into the arms and straighten. Kick heels towards seat. Bend and straighten. Bend and slowly lower, touching crown to crown. Press up, lift up. Try to headstand. And again, if you can, hips will come back. That is the counterbalance. Hips back as feet come forward. Can you toe tap? the floor and rise it back up and lead with your butt when you lead with your butt the feet will follow <laughs> one more lower toe tap back up again nice now knees come high and in towards the armpits and you don't have to do as extreme of a butt back to counterbalance the knees bent but nonetheless work that counterbalance press it up lift it up all right, so mostly the arms doing that work. 
and the head will just rise up naturally. Shift weight onto the left shin, right leg comes off, extend right leg back. Set the right foot way back, left foot between the palms, right foot swings down 45, we're gonna it up. Warrior two, inhale, rise. So again, we're getting that external femur bone orientation in the hip socket. Relax the shoulders, reach down the fingertips, lift the palm, reverse it, right hand lift by your calf, lengthen through the left side body. Inhale, rise. Let's elbow left thigh, right arm extends forward. Right hand can reach back, half bind. Left hand instep, left foot, there is a full bind. Full binders. Take flight, right foot steps forward. Press up, lift down. This will also help you to send energy through your legs as you ascend into your inversions. Working these transitions like this ascent into your bird of paradise with the straight leg. Right, no jerky leg syndrome. No, no, no. We have clean, clear communication. Slowly lower back down again. Take your time, birds. Can you keep that leg straight? Amazing. Shift weight into the left foot. Right leg sweeps up. Maybe a bound. Half moon on the way back. And step it way back. Release the bind. Reds warrior two. And straight through the left leg as you rise. Heel turn right before. Short and stance. Deep in left hip crease. Extend left arm forward. Reach. Left hand to ankle shin floor. Runner extends up and twists. Firm the navel in as you twist. Gaze is out the right fingertips. And again, gently bend the left knee, leave it forward, press up, lift up, half moon pose. Optional chakasana, bend the right knee, reach back with the right hand for the right foot. And working a little bow pose in to keep the heart space open. Don't want to create too much masculine to block off heart chakra. We want to balance those polarities out. And then gently release, we extend the right leg back. Right leg kicks out to the right. And then slowly work, lowering it back down again. Now optional, you can try it if you want to. Again, now left foot can come onto a block or two. Once you get past two, it can turn into Jenga pretty fast. So use a chair, a couch, some elevated surface, and then bending in the right knee. Peel the fire hydrant, lead with the knee. A little bit easier to balance with those wide legs. And then you can bring the legs together at the top. Now slowly lower, butt back, feet forward. Find the counterbalance. Release into the forward fold at the front of the mat. Grab off some elbows, shake the head yes, shake the head no. And again, walk the feet out to the ends of the mat, Malasana squat pose, bending deeply into the knees, elbows, inner thighs. So a couple things, I just want you to explore hopping up into your inversions here. Gonna make our way through vinyasa and move into the shoulders because they're undoubtedly hot. means <laughs> if your shoulders are spent, feel free to skip. So here's a couple things you can roll out your wrists uh, while I do a quick demo. Um, so. Initially, it's, it's easier to do a little tuck jump from the front of the mat, but it's not often discussed. Most people, uh, our teachers, will only teach the tuck jump from the back of the mat to the front of the mat. And the, the little tuck jump at the front of the mat is way easier. You don't have nearly any space or ground to cover. And so you can focus all of that tuck jump into ascending the hips over the shoulders instead of covering ground which is huge. Again, give yourself the baby steps that you need to be able to connect your central axis in space while upside down. So I'm going to work over that, go over that, and then also potentially the straddle hop. So I know that there's some teachers that are like, mm, you shouldn't be teaching a hop lose, but how else are you going to get there? And the main thing is, is you can work with slow and controlled descent down on your way back down to the ground. Um, and feel free to 
also explore maybe some toe taps. So I'm gonna, we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna give you a whole spectrum of things to work on. And again, take, pick and choose what serves you best. All right, so that being said, here's the little baby tuck jump. So you'll kind of come into a little, a little pouncing position. And then I call it a uh, pop squat. So <laughs> uh, back from my, yeah. Um, so a little, little pop squat. And then take it up. Then draw the legs together. Straighten out, maybe work a couple of those. I would it against the wall, lowering into the tuck, and then straighten out. All right, so like I said, we're gonna cover the whole gamut here. Now, we did each leg individually in the external standing posture sequence to prepare for puppy press. Now, doing both at the same time. So here we go. You're going to shoot both legs out. Make sure that there's no physical objects or people in the line of your legs that you're about to draw. So <laughs> for obvious reasons, right? We don't want to karate chop anybody. All right, so arms stay straight. Push the floor away. You kind of bend in the knees, coil up some potential energy in the legs. And then when you hop, kick both legs out wide. Find the balance and then connect the legs together at the top. Slowly lower and release. Woo! All right, so finally, toe taps. Now, if you're not a toe tapper, try. Just do your very best because toe taps are absolutely the most quintessential forward for our versions. If you want to do it right, right? If you want to actually be able to unfurl the spine up and do a legitimate press. And there's nothing wrong with the planche press, but you might actually be missing some of those muscles that allow for the spinal articulation. And those muscles are the muscles that will allow for kundalini conductivity through the midsection. So you could actually be blocking yourself off, especially in heart space, if you're just doing a planche press. Again, nothing wrong with it, but if that's your only way to ascend into an inversion, maybe rethink that, right? You might be actually creating too much masculine and just blocking off the feminine in your heart space. We want to get up to these guys, right? I don't do drugs, I am drugs. Salvador Dali. <laughs> All right, so um, for the toe tap to initially begin, you don't, you may not be able to press up into a handstand today, but just try, do the very best that you can to take your toe tap from the kasana. So you'll bring your toes to your wrists and then press your toes into your wrists. Also, it's kind of nice to make sure that you have groomed and giving yourself a little, little snip snip so that those toenails don't dig into your wrists. Just little things, little things. So here we go. Knees high up and in towards the armpits. Lean it forward into your bakasana. Toes to wrists. Press it up, lift up, straight through the arms. And lead with the butt. Legs come up to the top. Squeeze those legs together at the top. One single line of energy. Then back. Toes back to wrists. Bakasana, bend the elbows. Plant the knees, gaze forward, shoot the head forward as you shoot the feet back. Round bent elbows, forelimbs, staff. Vinyasa, melt your earth mudra. And exhaling, Adho Mudra, Svanasana. Now lower those forearms down to the mat. Roll the spine forward into your forward plank. Right away, hips to mat. And space. Walk the elbows forward and slide the right arm underneath your left. Walk the left arm forward. And you can walk the left arm forward and across and over to your right. What's nice about the inversions too is the heat does tend to evenly distribute itself as the oxygenated blood flow moves it around the body in space. Maybe slide the right knee out to the right. Half frog pose. Figure four, send in breath. Again, this stuff is maybe not as exciting as holding the handstand in the middle of the room, but also 
so, so important. If you want to thrive in your inversion practice, got to supplement, complement your inversion practice with the receptivity mode, opening up this space so that the masculine energy that you create in your inversion practice is balanced with the feminine aspect. Again, we are androgynous beings energetically. I'm not telling you dudes to go out and get a manicure, but <laughs> again, maybe just trim those toenails so that they don't dig into your wrist. But other than that, I'm talking internally. I don't want to plant any distortions here. This is an internal job, an inner job. Slide the right leg back inside the job. Walk the left arm back through to center and slide the right arm out from underneath. And you ladies too, if you're nervous about creating the masculine inside of you, slide the left arm underneath the right, walk the right arm forward and across and over to your left. Don't worry, the muscles will firm and tone to the bones. And so you won't end up with the massive Arnold Schwarzenegger bulbous arms. Slide that left knee out to the side. Figure four. Deep Ujjayi breaths, breathe into the rhomboids, muscles that connect the scapula to the spine. And what's nice too is you are not as vulnerable. And I've spoken from experience, you, you don't need to rely upon a male presence in your life as a codependent. And so you can, and which and you shouldn't have that type of energy dynamic in your interpersonal relationships anyways. So you can, this is one of the ways in your own individual physical practice, you can weed that out, that tendency out of your auric field so that you're no longer attracting that in the other. Now sliding the left leg back. Walk the right arm back through the center. Slide the left arm out from underneath. It's amazing how all of this stuff plays out in our, our holographic projected reality. Arms out to a T, gaze over at the right hand, line with the right shoulder, left hand underneath, left shoulder, bend the left knee, and roll onto your right side body. Left foot steps back behind your right thigh, left hand reaches back for your right fingertips. Deep Ujjayi breaths, breathe into the pectoralis. A couple more deep Ujjayi breaths here. Again, make that breath really count. This is the prime time, our opportune moment, to share life force energy with the field. Notice what comes up as well here. Back into center, and vice versa for you guys out there too. Left arm extends out, right hand underneath, right shoulder, bend right knee, and roll onto your left side body. And sometimes I think that you attract women so that they can feel with their emotional body on your behalf, and you won't necessarily, which is also another form of codependency, right? You're relying upon someone else to be able to tune into intuition for you. And in this way, you can clear that space. And, and then when you attract someone, it's not because you need them. And it doesn't manifest a codependent relationship as, as opposed to that, it's more interdependent. Beautiful work. Back through to center. All right, here we go. Just gonna roll through a few back bends because this is predominantly a heart chakra practice considering we're doing inversions. Hands come behind the back, interlace, press the palms together, massage or take them with your knuckles. Raise the hands back behind, straighten through the arms. Now maybe bend the knees, reach back with the hands, catch the feet, and slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Couple more deep Ujjayi breaths here. Gently release. The windshield wiper the feet. Release in your lower back. Hands underneath your shoulders. Press up, lift up. If you want to pass through a pelvic pose, sometimes it just feels so nice. Starting to think about the scorpion, maybe. Rise it up and roll the front of the mat up. Knees onto the roll. Notice too how luxurious these back bends feel. Because again, you do have the divine masculine, whether you're male or female, inside of you supporting this opening. Hands to hips. Here's some point up or down. Press the hips forward, roll the shoulders back, puff chest, roll the across the elbows. Maybe one hand to the ankle, forward by the other. 
beautiful work. Rise it back up again. Release the front of your roll and cross the shins, roll over the legs. Right leg draws in, not marrying you. So just go in the same, same. Right leg comes up and over the left leg. If you lean onto the left seat, slide the left heel towards your outer right hip or keep the left leg straight. Right hand behind sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, let's elbow out to right knee for me. We'll do twist, gaze over the right shoulder. So plenty to work on. Working into a standing split press in the handstand is for most people, if you have open hamstrings, that might be the easiest. Or a puppy press, which is the external rotation with your head going in the hip socket, might be easier if you have really open inner thighs. And again, the tuck jump is usually easiest if you have really tight hamstrings and tight hips overall. So everybody kind of ascends in their own way. Gently release and counter twist to the left. I highly recommend working on it even if your hips are tight because again, you will be able to connect to the South Dakota's throat chakra, brow chakra with more ease, which will help you to understand the stagnant energy back in the center, stack the knees that you're holding on to in your hips. And those limiting thought forms will be able to really show you exactly how it is that there is tension manifesting as a byproduct of limiting thought forms that you're thinking on repeat. Right arm extends, bend the elbow, reach the left hand up the back of the fingertips. Inhale as you find lift, and exhale in forward fold. So however you get there, you know, whether it's the same split ascent, the puppy press, a tuck jump, whatever works for you, work on getting there and utilize the heat to open up space Rolling the spine back up and seated. Release the arms and shake them out. Hands come back behind. Flare kick the legs in the interest of time. Left hand plants, or left foot plants, outer to your right thigh. Left hand behind the sacrum, right arm extends. Exhale, right elbow, outer to left knee from navel. And as you twist, gaze over the left shoulder. Deep Ujjayi breaths. And again, cultivate the good habits as well. I didn't go over it too much. Um, I might do a hollow body or hollow back flow as well. And the hollow back is much, much easier to find your jaw and dart on the chin lock. And then you can start to work your jaw and dart on the chin lock and your straight up and down handstands as well. Gently release counterbalance. Twist to the right. Back through the center. And stack the knees. And again, eventually, this is something I've been wanting to integrate and weave into my classes, but I've got to work with the demographic and with the community. So we're gonna we're gonna work the building blocks up to eventually one arm handstand and weaving that into flows as well. Left arm extends up, then the elbow reaches the right hand up back the fingertips. Because let's face it, the upper half and we've got some major clearing work to do. And as you find like an excellent forward fold, nice work. Deep Ujjayi breaths. But we find joy in the process and the work is never ending. So like our Capricorn friends, we learn to love the work and the work becomes play. Rolling the spine back up and seated. Release the arms. Shake them out. Hands back behind you. Straighten the legs out in front. Bounce the knees. Winch away for the feet. And slide the flesh the bone out from underneath. Inhales to sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, forward fold. So today we're just working straight up and down in our ascent. Again, working these little building blocks. And feel free to come back to this video as many times as you need to build that, that strong sense of foundation necessary to proceed and, and to grow into even more complex inversions. And then rolling the spine up through the seat, roll down onto your back, hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice warm embrace, rocking gently from side to side, massaging the back body slightly. Soles of the feet can come to the mat, hips distance apart. Again, roll out the wrists if you need to before going up. Massage those wrists, turn the key, rev the motorcycle, and then when you're ready, press up, lift up, hands alongside ears, engaging your quads, your thighs your glutes, lower abs. Now press up the most of the crown of the head, pause. 
Walk the hands in. Press up, lift up the rest of the way up into your full garden dandarasana. Maybe take some rocks and come up to stand. You can utilize the wall space too, and then take it back, drop back. Hips forward, both hands ready to receive the floor, so we don't want any mishaps. And now tuck the chin, back the head to the mat, slowly release the spine back down, windshield away from the knees, releasing your lower back. Hug the right knee in, extend your left leg out. Scoot the hips to the right, roll the right knee over to your left. Stacking the right hip on top of the left hip, roll the right shoulder down to the ground and breathe into your lower back. Back through to center. Switch on left knee, extend right leg out, scoot the hips to the left, roll the left knee to the right. Stack left hip on top of right hip, roll left shoulder to the ground, breathe into your lower back. Back through to center, legs extend straight up, wrap the elbows in, pressing down through the upper arms. Keep the gaze directly up, one more shoulder stand just to close up the practice. Press it up, lift it up. Walk the hands down the back, press chest towards the chin. You can go on the feet down, the loss in the plow, hands can come behind the back, interlace, press palms together. Maybe bend knees towards the forehead or around your ears, Pranakadasana. And slowly lower, releasing it, interlace, roll the spine down, hands underneath your seat, press down through the forearms, lift the chest up, crown head to the mat, breathe into the front of the throat, Matsyasana, fish pose. And gently release. Grab outer edges of the feet, rock it gently side to side, happy baby pose, releasing your lower back. Now extending the legs out, feet flop open, palms face up, close the eyes. Give yourself permission to rest in complete stillness and absorb the benefits of your practice. And again, all sorts of things come up. Remember that you are healing on behalf of the collective, all of humanity. As we open up heart space, create strength where there was previously weakness, we are resetting, redirecting our energy through the central axis. Thank you on behalf of all of existence for taking this time to learn how to hold space in your field of consciousness. Namaste.